What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to the joiners. Shout out to the Point of View crew. And right now, trip on this. I'm going to tell you about a time I made some poor decisions. Are you surprised to hear that once upon a time, I might have made some poor decisions? And these ones right here could have ended real badly if you're picking up what I'm putting down. However, I did leave myself a scapegoat. That's got to count for something, right? Maybe not trip on this. As I've mentioned before in the past, my dad, rest in peace, passed away from mesothemioma, asbestos-related cancer. So, back in the day, not any time recently, but back in the day, especially when I was doing a lot of prison time, I'd get random checks. So, this particular period of time, I happened to be in Soledad, North Yard Level 3. We just got off of a year-long lockdown because of a riot with North Daniels. We're just coming off, we're just getting yard, we're going to the store, and I, out of the blue, get legal mail. Letting me know that, hey Chris, you got 1400 bucks on the way. A little, a little species settlement kicked off. 1400 bucks, homeboy. So I get this letter in the mail, what am I going to do with this, I wonder. Hmm, what should I do with this? piece of paper saying I got $1,400. Oh, I know. I'll take it to the yard. I'll take it on a tier and I'll shop it around a little bit and see if I can get me a little, some Garga. Maybe if I can get me a little Bob Marley homeboy. I'm gonna do something. Especially, I reasoned, I've been on lockdown for a year. Now, I wasn't trying to be, play the part of the deceiver, but all this letter did was inform me that, hey, I got $1,400 coming. It didn't say when, but judging by other settlements, judging by the past, I can safely assume and figure I'll probably get it four to six weeks. But usually when you buy something on the yard, they want that money to land within three weeks. So I knew I was going to be going past by a week or so. That's if I got this money in four to six weeks. I waited six months one time. Homie, hold another video. So, bro, I got this letter, I hit the tier, and I start making purchases. I get $100 from this dude, I get $100 from this dude, 50 from this dude. The one, the purchase I made that came to bite me in the butt the most was when I got a $400 bag of weed off this South Sider. That whole purchase right there could be a video in and of itself, because that dude was heated, homeboy. I'm getting way ahead of myself. So I got that bag of weed. I got this. Now I'm starting to notice and think to myself, after a couple of weeks of this purchasing, making purchases on the yard, homeboy, with my letter, like, okay, um, I owe now probably six or seven different people. Totaling probably four or five hundred bucks, if not more. I haven't got that $400 bag of weed yet. If you're on the other side of this video doing math, that came later. Should never came at all. Be that as a may, homeboy. I woke up one day and said, I owe five or six different people. How am I going to pay all of them with one check? But homeboy, I'm resourceful. I got hustle and I know there's a will, there's a way. And I went and talked to Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid and Charlie Brown have it sewed up. They're living large, homeboy. They have all the tobacco. They have cans and cans and cans of tobacco because they're tied in good. They're, they're, they're kicking it tough with the plumber, the free staff, the guy who gets to go home at night and shows up in the morning to work as a maintenance man, as a plumber. He gets his little cart. He's a free staff for the prison. Well, Billy the Kid and Charlie Brown knew him really well. Knew him so good that he would come over with his cart and drop off four by six cans of tobacco at a time to them. They say, oh, our toilet broke. It's, it's overflowing. It won't flush. Our sink is busted. Here would come the plumber. He would do a drop off. So I, knowing that, I go to Billy the Kid. I say, what's up, brother? I got this check, 1400 bucks coming. I already owe probably half that on the yard to several different individuals. 
I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, brother. Let, help me figure this out. How can I invest? What can I do? No worries, he says. Give me that check. Give me that check. We'll sneak it out to the streets when you get it through the plumber. The plumber will take it to the streets. He will get it to my people. They will do what they have to do with it. And we will do whatever. Split it up however you want. He's all, is there room for me to make a buck or two? You know there is, homeboy. So I had it pretty much nipped in the bud, brother. I had it pretty much taken care of. And I still had money to spend out there making purchases. Now, when all that's going on, there's a dude a couple cells down from me. Chris from Sacramento. He's a wood. He's a white boy. On the streets, he kicked up with North Daniels, though. Never joined a gang, nothing like that. But that's who he kicked it with. You could tell by his music and his style, his steel homeboy. You could tell he hung out with Northerners on the streets. In fact, that's how he got his case. He was at a party with a bunch of Northerners. He had himself a cuete. Dum, 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 dum. Did some dumping and caught 10 with 80. Had to do eight years. He was doing eight years right there at Soledad when I knew him. So his deal was his aunt hooked him up with the best, I'm not even going to call it a pen pal, homework. the pen pals don't get down like this, I, I'll go so far as to call it a blind date, I don't know what this is, hooked him up with a girlfriend, let's put it like that, his, Chris's aunt hooked him up with one of her friends, and she was on Chris's team taking care of him, tough, and they didn't even know each other, never even met on the streets, just start writing, and he must have long game, let me put you like that, I don't know what he was saying in those letters, homeboy, but he had her on the team, She's a total square, she's sober, doesn't use, never has, and somehow he talks her into going and picking up a half ounce of gotaga from his cousin and bringing it into him. I didn't know all that was in play, I didn't know he talked her into it, I didn't know he was bringing anything in until he brought it in and then shit hit the straight BAN! Cause it was a bunk! Dude brought in a straight up bunk half ounce of gotaga. And people were pissed because there was a lot of pre-orders. There was a lot of people who had already paid. He told people, hey, I got this coming this weekend. Like, whoop, there's 200 already. So he already had a lot of it sold before he even got it. And then, of course, when he got it, he starts dicing it up. And he starts selling it. People are getting it as a bunk. And they are freaking pissed. And they're coming at him. And they want blood. And he doesn't use it's strictly money-making venture on his part. He doesn't use... He's backing up like crawl He doesn't know what to do. All these people are coming at him. And that's when I come in. Dun, da, da, da. Captain save -ho. I'm going to save the day. I tell everyone, kick back. This dude doesn't even use. He doesn't know. He wasn't out there making the purchase on boy. He didn't. He wasn't out there making the call and sending it in. He just brought it. He has no way of knowing the quality. The girl who brought it doesn't use. He doesn't use. He just took a gamble. He brought it in. Look, he's going to pay you back. Whoever bought, don't trip. You're going to get your money back. No worries. You're going to get refunded in full. We're going to get this all sorted out. And when a couple weeks goes by and he hits again, and this time it's fire because he would not make the same mistake twice, he's going to remember that you were gracious to him and didn't come at him all hardcore and, get, and forgive him for this mistake. That was not even his fault. So yeah, brother. They all backed up like crawdads, homie. They, they, they gave him some time. They had some patience. And everyone got their money back. No worries. But for me, doing that for Chris, he was so thankful for me, man. We, he lived a couple cells down. Up at that point, we never even really talked. After that, we talked all the time. And then he's like, hey, Splinter, next time I hit and bring it in, I want you to try it first. And he's like, no more pre-orders, man. I'm not going to sell it till I have it. And next time I have it, Splinter, I'm giving it to you first. You try it. You let me know if it's good. And dude, I was in like Flynn, homeboy. I was in like swim gear with the plug. Bam, he hits again. Gives it to me. I give him the green light. I say it's good. And he's, he's selling it. All the while, I'm making, waiting for my asbestos check. Then I happen to have a conversation with Chris. I say, hey, bro. I got this check coming on the way. Because I was thinking about doing something with him. I got this check coming on the way. It's 1400 bucks. He's like, what are you doing with this and that? And then I, and I got a big mouth sometimes. I'll admit it. I'll own it. I, I, I do like to just talk. I'll talk, homeboy. I'll throw myself out there. I, I should be mums the word a lot of times and be more secretive. But I said, yeah, dude, I got a check coming on the way, bro. And I'm going to give it to Billy the Kid. He's going to sneak it out. We're going to do this and that. And he's like, Billy the Kid? I hate that fool. He hated Billy the Kid. He couldn't stand him. 
Billy the Kid and Chris did not like each other at all because they were sellies once upon a time. They were sellies. And Billy the Kid kicked Chris to the curb so that he can move in with Charlie Brown. And then they start balling with the tobacco. Never even showed no love to Chris. Made him buy full price whenever he purchased tobacco. Just no love! And Chris is like, oh, I can't stand that fool. He's like, Splinter, bro. You're my homie, bro. We've been doing things. Don't, don't do no business with him, man. Let me get that check, Chris said. Let me get it. Let me send it to my people. I'll split it up. I'll take care of it for you. I was like, all right, brother. All right. I'll send it to you then. And it was getting about time where the check was going to hit. By now, it had been like a month or so. All the people I owed were like, Splinter, what's up? Splinter, what's up? I was showing the check. Look, you know it's good. I'm not the check. The letter. Let him read it. You know it's good. You know it's coming on the way. I can't help the mail. Be here any time. But people are definitely on my bumper because it's been four, maybe five weeks. No check yet. Then all of a sudden, check. But what I had done was call my lawyers from a cell phone and pretend like I was on the streets. Hey, it's me. It's Chris. I'm on the streets. When you guys get that check, send it to me right here to my apartment in Sacramento. This is where I'm living. Send my check there. So after four, five, six weeks, we're in Soledad. Chris calls home and his old lady tells him, hey, I got a check here in my apartment. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's the homeboy Splinter. Take that check, deposit it. I'll tell you what to do with the money. Dude, she flipped out. Oh, uh, she flipped out, dude. As you can imagine, she's a square. She probably already had reservations and second thoughts about bringing narcotics into the institution every weekend and some of the other stuff she was doing. But now this is, what is this? This is straight up some kind of bank fraud? What is this, homeboy? Is she getting a check in the mail with some random name on it? Chris? Is she thinking it's fake? It's from a law firm? She's thinking it's fake? She's telling Chris, tell Chris this is fake! He's like, no, 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 check it out, check it out, check it out. Dude, she ripped the check up and she changed her phone number, and she shut it all down, and she had nothing to do with Chris after that. No more visits, no more gotta He was asked out. Dude, he had nothing more coming. She slammed the door in his face, bro. When she got that check mail to her, I don't know if he even warned her. I don't know if he talked about it and said, hey, there's a check coming, it's my homeboys, can you handle it and do whatever? I don't know if he took it for granted that he had her hemmed up and sewed up. Dude, I think he was giving himself way too much credit. He didn't have that chick quite on on, on the line as, as he thought. Because she wiggled off the hook, she swam away, and now he's sitting there like, rut row, assed out, bro. No more got it on the weekends. And now guess what? Hey, Chris, where's my 1400 bucks? Where's my 1400 bucks, dog? The chick got it. She said, hey, there's a check, the check here. Trying to say chick and check. The chick said there's a check, bro. And that's all she said. Boom. Change your number. Couldn't get a hold after that. That was it. And plus my lawyers told me, dude. Touchdown. Eagle landed. We sent the check. So, dude, now Chris is, re is reliable. Not reliable. Responsible for all my debt, dude. Because he has my check. And I'm coming up short, bro. Because it's $1,400. I didn't think I owed $1,400. I thought I owed like eight, dude. That's what I thought. So then there's like $600 extra. My check is gone. And then all the mist of that, dude, of me like, where's my check and all this? Whoop! I get a green ducket under the door. You're going to Arizona. Burton, rolled up. I'm going to Arizona. Send me to Arizona, dude. And when they give you a ducket and say you're going to Arizona, it happens that fast. I put in a sick, I, I put in a sick call slip to get psych meds. You can't go to Arizona on site meds. That's what everyone was doing. We don't want to go to Arizona. Get on site meds. The site doctor was shooting everyone down. No, 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 no. You can't be on them. You can't be on them. So then what people are doing, they're going on... I don't want to say the word. Suicide watch. Pretending they're that desperate and that, you know what I'm saying, hopeless. That's what Chris from Sacramento did. Went on that watch. So he got to stay there. I was not going to go on that kind of watch, bro. And go sit in the hole for three days in a padded room on potty watch, butt naked. Send me to Arizona. Later. I'm out. I'm outy. So, bro, it happened that fast. Next thing you know, I'm going to thing. I'm like, I'm going to Arizona. But, hey, I got all this debt, though, dude. I got all this debt. $800, right? 
So then I talked with the powers of B, Billy the Kid, Charlie Brown, the woods who has the keys to the building. I talked to Chris, got everyone together and said, dude, I got all these debts. Thousand, I don't know it was a thousand bucks yet. Seven eight hundred bucks I owe. I gotta go to Arizona. I'm not gonna be able to leave with these debts, but technically my debt belongs to Chris now. Chris, he took ownership of all my debts by having me mail the check to him. Dude, he put himself right in the middle of me and all my debts, dog, like, ah, and took it on the chin. Just straight up his hatred for Billy the Kid. He should have backed all the way up. He's already getting his gotta every weekend. He was already living fat, dude. He, he did too much, bro. Bit off more than he could chew. And now, dog, now he's responsible for all my debts. So we had to go door to door. Cell to cell. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, hey, what's up, bro? Hey, you know the money I owe you? Chris gonna pay you. We went... Sell to sell up and down the tier from one end of the block to the other to all these different people bro And it added up way more than what I thought I ain't up owing like 1200 bucks, dude 11 1200 dollars to like 15 different people blah, 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 blah. I, uh, Bro, it kind of reminds me when I get paid on the 21st and I get my YouTube money And then I make a couple purchases and I spend it and, and it's gone and I'm like what the heck? It goes so quickly, and then I start making an itemized list, and I'm like, okay, it checks out. Like, wow, it just when you write it down, like that's a lot. It did I made a lot of purchases, and in prison, solid debt, man, I made a lot. Got a lot of debt, I guess, twelve hundred bucks, and all on Chris's shoulder. And guess what? He had no way to pay for it. How's he gonna pay for it? He got no more business. He got nothing coming, no action. You know what he ended up doing? He ended up hooping his cell phone. It looked like this, and charge it looked like this. When you hoop something. When you're making a claw bow, you always put like a tip on it. You want it to taper. You don't ever just go like blunt like this. I don't know what he did, homeboy. He hooped his cell phone, his charger, and went to the hole and rolled it up and got the hell out of there. Because they were going to get his ass for my $1,200 debt. His bad though, homie. His $1,200 debt. And now look, now I'm in Arizona, bro. And it's been three or four months. And my celly, Richie Rich, is working in the kitchen. And some new dude comes in. He's on A side. We're on B side. I'm talking not A side, B side. A yard, B yard in Arizona. Don't even see these people. We share a cafeteria, a chow hall. That's it. I don't see him. Richie, Richie Rich sees him because he's working in the kitchen. He sees everybody. And he sees this dude from Soledad. Hey, what's up, Richie Rich? Who's your cellie? And he's like, Splinter. Splinter's my cellie. He's like, oh, that dude's all bad on me. He left Soledad with all kinds of debt. He left Solid out with a bunch of debt. Now you can't leave prison with debt, dude. They'll, there's no way that you can walk out of there with debt. This is not going to happen. Everyone knows when you leave. They know where you're going. They know what you owe. I'd have been walking with my property. And it just would have never happened. That's why I went cell to cell getting it all straightened out. Because there's no way I could leave like that. And I didn't leave quickly. You know when you leave, you stand around, wait for transport. Then you walk over here and you stand there and you have your stuff. And then you're in R&R for a long time. It's not like that I... Skediddled out the yard real fast. No, homie. I left and I left with my head held high. Everything was good. Chris is the one so bad. He's the one with the wrecked booty in the hole. But I was upset. And that dude was talking crap about me. Just like sometimes I get comments on these videos. People talk shit about me. And it upsets me, bro. Who likes to be talked bad about? I didn't like this dude spreading it around. Oh, Splinter's all bad. Let's sell it down with all this debt. So I went and told Bucky. Bucky from Purdue, I said, dude, there's this dude over there in AR talking bad about me, man. Sin I left saw dad and debt. That can get me hurt. The wrong people hear that, but start plotting on me. That's bad. That's called smutting me up. If that may to my homeboy on the streets, I mean, dude, we gotta squash that. I said, Bucky, what do I do? He's like, we're moving over there. We're gonna move to A side. Put a slip in. Cause dude, Arizona at that time, inmates ran the prison. It was freshly opened. The cops were weak. They're like security guards, and the inmates did what the hell they wanted when they wanted. He's like, we're moving over there to A, homie. Put your slip in, we'll request that bed move, and we're gonna go over there to A, because Bucky had, Bucky had a uh, theory, homie. Not a theory, Bucky had a uh, mindset. Hit everything dead on. You don't bob and weave, you don't run from nothing, you don't tiptoe around it, hit it dead on, confront him. What do you mean I left with debt? Put your bed move in, he said. Bucky and I put our bed moves. We're going to A, confront this dude. What's up, fool? Richie Rich sees him a couple days later in the kitchen. He's like, hey, dude, Splinter's moving over there to see you, talk to you. He's like, what? What? Why? Well, Splinter's coming over there to confront you because you said he had a bunch of debt. Splinter said he left with no debt and he wants to confront you face to face while you're saying that. He's like, oh, no, no, my bad. Tell Splinter not to move over here. My bad. 
I was just repeating what I heard like a parrot. Bacock! Repeating what I heard! Repeating what I heard! Bacock! He goes, hey, bro, there was no emotion behind that. I, I, I'm not wrapped up in it. I don't got to fight in the dog, old boy. A dog in the fight, whatever you want to call it. No, my bad, my bad. No! Tell me I didn't say that. I apologize. So we end up not moving. And that's, yet again, the third person in this video we see. Backing up like a crawdad, homeboy. That's how they get down sometimes. And man, I want to elaborate more on this dude talking shit to me in the comments. I'll save it for live. We're going to go live. We're going to go live in a minute. Here in a minute. We're going to go live in a minute. We're going to go live here in a minute. I'm going to cut the string and let it fly. Peace. I forgot to add something. Damn it.